Testing.
Hello. Hello, hello. Wow, the room's uh, really filling up. Yep. I mean, I guess we have like 300, 400 RSVPs. I'm not sure. Okay. But wow. they are around 300. I like your sunglasses. I mean, sorry, glasses. <laughs> well, they're not prescription. <laughs> you can't just get these at the optometrists. Hi, good afternoon. It's afternoon in India. And morning here, 10.30 a.m. Oh God, that's, that's too early. <laughs> okay, we'll wait for it to fill up a little bit and then we'll kick off. Yes. Oh, stuff's going on in the chat already. Good afternoon, or good evening, or good morning, or good good day to you all, to everyone <laughs> in the chat. That makes it better. <laughs> Sounds so very old-fashioned. Good day, sir. Good day, madam. <laughs> <laughs> what's, with that, what's with that accent? Oh, it's the plummy kind of posh English person who's the only kind of person who would ever say, oh, good day. <laughs> Everyone else would just say good morning or good afternoon, but it doesn't really work with time zones. So we're going to have to bring it back. We're going to have to make it cool. Everybody who's in this, this is your job now. This is my one call to action. Okay. Start saying good day to other people. <laughs> Akansha is asking, hey, Alex, how are you? How are you I'm very well, thanks. I have got coffee number three in front of me, so I am almost awake. I just wish it was nicer weather here in Berlin. It's a little bit grim, but. So in India, it's like a uh, between rainy and winter season. So we are daily transitioning into winters, but we are in rainy season right now. Okay, here it's just cloudy and getting cold. And I really hope it doesn't rain. Hang on, I'll check the forecast. <laughs> uh, maybe a bit of rain. Oh, well. So I, I live in Dehradun, okay? So Dehradun has like, it doesn't have any other season except for rainy season. Well, at least you know Only what like to two expect. Months, I guess, other season. <clears throat> <laughs> That's even bad. You get a shower before you leave the house and a shower after you leave the house. I'm just very excited for this. Okay. Oh, it's uh, it's one hundred and eight now. Eleven. Wow, filling up. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, good to Nachmittag to you too. But I, I'm not German. I'm British. <laughs> well, I'm New Zealander. So, kia ora. <laughs> <laughs> what What does this mean? It doesn't mean good day or good morning. Good day. Wow. It's Maori. So in New Zealand, we have two official languages, English and Maori, and Maori are the native people. Before us wonderful British colonized. <laughs> yeah, we have a bit of a rep for that. Sorry, everyone. All right, we'll give it one more minute, then we'll kick off. Here in India, it's afternoon two two. Yeah, it's it's right. It's Ten thirty. Okay, maybe my clock's wrong. It says ten thirty four on my computer, so it's like a few hours, half an hour, and two minutes difference. Yeah, India and Germany has like three and a half hour difference. Cool. Okay, let's get this party started, people. Yay. <laughs> Okay, I will share my screen.
people are really liking your glasses but they don't know i'm after them <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to start sending glasses out as swag <laughs> yeah um i want to i have access to tools like 3d printers and laser cutters so i'll make some custom gina glasses that will be awesome <laughs> okay speaking of glasses me again i'm alex cg no mister thank you very much or no Ms or Mrs, I just don't do titles. Uh, I'm developer relations lead at Gina AI. Uh, my job is basically building cool examples, improving user onboarding, doing workshops and all that jazz. I like wearing ridiculous things on my face and building life-size robotic butterfly jewelry. And as you can see, I dislike shaving. Uh, you can find me on GitHub and Twitter. Uh, those are my usernames. Feel free to follow me, say hi. Uh, I swear a bit on Twitter. So if you're not into that, maybe not. Uh, for any questions and stuff, we will, I don't know how we'll handle them. Uh, ask them in the chat. Uh, yeah, we could do a quick Q&A at the end. They can also ask in the chat, I'm there. Yeah, uh, so we've got the Q&A box. So ask questions there. So they're all in one place. So Agena. Wait, I thought I had a better intro than that. Okay, so in this workshop, we're going to solve a problem. We want to build a search engine where you can type in a couple of words and you'll get memes back that match. For example, if you type in animal food, well, you don't have the word animal in any of these. Uh, do we have the word food? Uh, no, we don't even have the word food, but we know these are related to animal food. Because, well, okay, yellow juice, I don't want to go there, but my dog, when I eat everything, animals, food. So this isn't just searching keywords, this is searching for actual meaning. So I'll give a quick introduction to neural search to start off with, then an introduction to Gina AI, who I work for, and that's the technology stack we're using. We'll do the workshop, and then we'll talk about some next steps for you to take. So what is search? I mean, it seems like an obvious question, right? This is search to most people. You open your browser, you go to a website, you see a text box, typey, 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 hit enter, get results back. So sure, this is search, but there are so many other kinds of search as well like searching for PDFs, upload a PDF, find similar PDFs, or searching for video, upload a video, find similar videos. So things like similarity search, or for music, upload some Beyonce, get Beyonce back, or Destiny's Child, because she was in Destiny's Child, so it's similar. Apps, images, or even something like a chatbot is search. It only returns one result each time, but it's essentially a search engine. So search is way bigger than just typing stuff into a text box. When you think about it, even things like dating apps are search. You fill in a profile, it searches for people that are similar to you. But what is neural search? So neural search is all about looking at data and using a deep neural network to find embeddings. And embeddings tell you how similar something is to another thing. So as you can see, we've got uh, two pictures of Bulbasaur here. They're very similar. We can see it's the same Pokemon. We can see he's green and he's got a kind of a bulb on the back. We can see very similar shapes. And then we've got a picture of Charmander, Charizard. If anyone knows better, post it in the chat. So, Orange, dinosaur shaped, uh, fire Pokemon, not a plant Pokemon. So if we were drawing a graph, a very simple graph, they'd be very different. And we can map coordinates onto them. And this kind of mapping, this graphing, we call an embedding. And usually when we're dealing with embeddings, it's in way more than just two dimensions like this. But I don't have a 10 dimensional screen. So yeah, I can't show you anything better. So with neural search, we take these mappings, these embeddings, and we do similarity search. So we could index 
a whole bunch of memes. And similar memes will have similar embeddings. And we could put them in the same places on a graph. Uh, like the Winnie the Pooh memes would all have similar embeddings. So they'd be in one part of the graph on one axis. But memes about food, well, one of those might be a Winnie the Pooh meme. One of those might be a Nicolas Cage meme. One of them might be a Doge meme. So they're all about food. So they're all similar, but they're similar in a different way. So there are many different kinds of similarity. And if we use the right model, we can embed all of those in the graph. Then we can get the coordinates and compare them to find similar things. So neural search, the advantages are that it's semantic. I showed you earlier that animal food search. And it returned things about dogs and eating, but nothing with the words animal or food. And that's because the model we're using, it understands the deeper meanings of the words. So it would also find memes about French fries or memes about poodles or memes about any kind of animal. It's data type agnostic, as I showed you earlier, searching a whole range of different data types. And we can use a wide array of different models to understand things in different ways. Some models might be really good at understanding Pokemon sprites, whereas others might be better at identifying which animal is which, or identifying <clears throat> which celebrity is which, so like human faces, a model like FaceNet. And there are so many of these models out there. And by model, I mean like uh, a deep neural network. But one of the big challenges people have had so far, well, I'll back up. People have been building neural search, AI powered search. That's a thing. But it's always been a real headache because building it, sure, scaling it, optimizing it, getting it running on Kubernetes, on Docker, that's difficult. And that's where Gina comes in. We solve the challenges of infrastructure and optimization. In effect, we take out all the hard work. We make building your neural search plug and play. So our mission is to provide an open source neural search ecosystem that lets you search for any kind of information in any kind of data with high availability and scalability. And our repo is just down here, get.gina.ai. And as I said before, we can search anything. If it can be encoded, if it can be turned into ones and zeros, and there's a neural network that can understand that, we can search it. So text, images, audio, video, we're working on uh, some of our community are building projects use, uh, that search 3D meshes. So if you're building you know, a triple A computer game and you need meshes for models for good guys, enemies, items you pick up, you can search by similarity or even protein search. We've got a couple of people building a search engine for amino acids. And you only really need to learn about three things to use Gina. First of all, the document. That's a basic data type to represent any piece of information. So a text, an image, a piece of audio, a piece of video, blah, blah, blah. An executor. So an executor does one thing to a document. For example, if the document, if you're building a search engine for Shakespeare texts, you would be, the documents you index would be Romeo and Juliet, uh, Macbeth, Hamlet, and so on. An executor would take one of these documents and maybe cut it down into sentences because that's going to be a lot easier to search. And maybe that's what you want to get back as a search result, not the whole text, just a sentence or it might encode them into the graphs I showed you earlier. And typically a document would go through a lot of executors. Well, in this example, we just let it go through a couple of executors uh, and the flow. So the flow is how we connect executors to each other to create a pipeline, kind of like uh, a conveyor belt uh, at a factory. It, pushes the document through different executors and spits them out at the end. Right now, uh, our main focus is on Gina itself, which is the open source framework and Gina Hub. 
So Gina Hub, well, if you build a search engine, you have these neural network models. You still have to do quite a lot of coding to integrate them. But with Hub, you can just integrate them with one line of code. It'll download them. They can run in Docker. It's dead simple. For me, before I joined Gina, I didn't really have a background in AI and deep learning. And to be honest, I still couldn't build or integrate these models myself. But with one line of code, it just works out of the box. So in this workshop, we're going to build a neural search engine that searches meme text and it returns matching memes. And we'll cover some Gina basics as well. You can play with this uh, in the real world at examples.gina.ai. I'll show you now. So we could search for Squidward School as an example, and we'll get Squidward results back. So I don't know why this one's top. Maybe I need to improve the model, but this is about school. This is about school. What else? Classes. So again, not, oh, we've got school here. Um, and some of them aren't that related to school because at the end of the day, we only indexed so many memes and there are so many topics a meme could be about. So I don't know if you search Elvis Presley, we might not get any memes back. I mean, the thing about neural search is it tries. So it will never not return results. That can be a good thing or a bad thing. But we've got Miley Cyrus. It knows Elvis is a musician. It knows Miley Cyrus is a musician. So it's really trying its best here. It knows he's a celebrity. Celebrities go to Vegas. Um, and some of them, it just, maybe there aren't any suitable memes or maybe it just, the model runs out of steam. So you can play with that at examples.gina.ai. We also have a mobile game search engine. Uh, the image search for this, we're not going to cover in the workshop. And there's something wrong with it. Uh, I don't know what, but if we search for, uh, I had some memes here. So if we search for Doge, it, it's bringing back completely the wrong things. Um, I don't know why. I have to go and fix that later. Uh, but we're not covering that in the workshop today. So for the workshop today, we're going to be working out of a Python notebook. So I'll put the link for this in, actually, hang on. Sure, I'm sharing the right link. I'll put the link for this in the chat. Where's the chat gone? Oh, I, I put it by the way. Oh, you put it. Okay, awesome. And you can also find this on our GitHub repo uh, if you want to run it locally on your own machine. I've tested it on Colab and in Jupyter Lab. So, yeah, it'll work. Well, I say it'll work. It worked yesterday. I don't want to tempt fate with the demo effect. So, yeah, as I said, Going to build a meme search engine using Gina. It'll search a data set of memes. Uh, I found the memes on Kaggle. Uh, and we're just going to focus on searching text. So first of all, we want to go to our root directory. We should be there already, but you never know. We're going to pull our requirements file. Uh, Q means quiet, N means overwrite, just so we don't get bombarded with text and we're going to install everything from it. And I will just uh, clear the output. However, I do that. Run anyway, please. I and I would be looking through the code of this notebook. Um, if I, oh, okay. See, demo effect already. So this is because I, I made the notebook before I merged it. So just going to uh, copy the link address here. 
and update that. Okay, and it found it. That's good. Yeah, as I was saying, I wrote this notebook. I imported it directly from GitHub. You can see with a little icon there, so I trust it. But don't, yeah, if you didn't write the notebook, read through it. Trust nobody, and including me. I look very trustworthy, but you never know. Uh, so next step, we're going to download the data set. I got it from Kaggle. I got it because it has really rich metadata. So it tells you the templates, for example, Winnie the Pooh, and it tells you the caption, uh, my dog's face when I'm eating and food falls on the floor or whatever. It kind of sucks though, because memes are very timely and that data set came out a while ago. Uh, how old is it? Let's see. Updated a year ago. So eh, that's a lifetime in meme terms, I think. So yeah, it, it only has so many memes. So some things that you will know it won't have. Anyway, let's get that. We're not getting it direct from Kaggle because you need an account and blah, blah, blah. But it's an open source data set. So we've got a copy hosted on our own machines. OK, it's got that. We're going to load the data now. So in this function, we're going to create a document array. That's going to hold documents. And I explained those earlier, right? So those are a basic data type for any piece of information. So we're going to make one document per meme. And then we're going to put those into a document array. And that's essentially just like a Python list, but for documents. We're going to shuffle them. And I'll go into why we want to do that. Yeah, create a document for each one. We're going to set the document text to the template name. In this case, it would be surprised koala. And the meme caption. In this case, this is poisonous. What? And we're going to populate some tags. So the tags are basically the metadata uh, in the form of a Python dict. So things like the absolute URL, which is given in the data set. And normally the tags are generated automatically, but the metadata is a little hinky on this. So I have to do a bit of manual tweaking. So we've installed Gina. Uh, let's import document and document array and get started. Uh, this is just a function to prepare the documents. I won't dive too deeply into this because every data set is different. So every time you write a new Gina app, you'll probably want to write a different prep docs thing. And I should really be using yield here, but yeah, I can go back and change that later. Yield will create a generator, so it'll spit documents out one at a time instead of spitting out all the documents at once. These documents are pretty lightweight, so it's not going to be a big deal. But if you were doing, uh, trying to search for videos and you needed to have a big database of videos, you'd definitely use yield. Now, why do we need to shuffle? So these memes are arranged very logically in the uh, JSON file. And we don't want to search, well, I'd love to search all of them, but that means we need to feed all of them into the system. And that'll take quite a lot of time. And ain't nobody got time for that. So we're just going to search a subset. And if we just go from the top down, and these memes are arranged alphabetically by template, then, well, I'll show you what happens. So we'll go to prep docs, uh, the input file here. Let's just say 10 documents to test, and we won't shuffle. And then let's print the absolute URI. And let's look at the memes that came out. OK, we've got a hotline bling, Drake meme, and another hotline bling and another and so on because it's all arranged very logically we don't want that because if we're indexing let's say even a thousand memes we're going to have a lot of very very similar things not much diversity so if we search for koala we're going to get nothing in there we want to shuffle it up um 
In my shuffle, I'm using a random seed of leet or 1337. This just ensures we get the same kind of randomness every time. So if I want to change out the neural network for something different, so I can test which is better, I'm testing on the same results, but they're going to be randomized in exactly the same way. So let's try that again. Yep, we've shuffled them now. We'll print the absolute URI. I'll just close these ones so we don't get confused. And we'll open the new ones. OK, so we've got uh, world something is man. Can't remember the name. We've got hard luck Harold. We've got something, something office, office space memes. So yeah, it's a lot more diversity there. And that's what we want. Um, but now we actually don't want to search a decent sized data set. So instead of 10, we'll do 10, oh, 5,000. We know the shuffling is working. So let's do that. Processing, done. And we're going to define what model we're using. In this case, it's uh, a model from Hugging Face from Transformers, which is, I'd say, the most popular framework for searching text and sometimes other things. Uh, there are a whole bunch of these models on huggingface.co. Uh, and we shall go to Filmers. So all of these you can use with one line of code in Gina. So some you have models for searching Chinese, you have multilingual search. Uh, what else do we have? We have uh, we have some kind of Hindi search, Urdu. No Tamil. If found Terence ML, I don't think that's what we would want there. But yeah, you can use any of these models. Some, some of them are more specialized for other things, but for us, we are using uh, this one, sentence transformers, blah, blah, blah. I chose this because it was recommended to me by, by someone who knows more than I do. There might be better ones out there, but if there are, I don't know. This works well enough. So now we've got all of our documents. And after that, we're going to create our flow. Uh, executors will go over in a little bit. Yeah, stream. So flow is we put documents in one end, they pop out the other end. So as you can see, we have flow.add. And here we have the executor. So we have transformer torch encoder, and it's using that model. The paraphrase distill, but distill Roberta base, blah, blah, blah. And we're telling it max length of 50 because maybe there'll be one meme that's like, maybe there's a glitch in the data set and there's going to be one meme that is like, has metadata of like thousands and thousands of characters. And it's like, uh, that might just cause too much trouble. So we're just going to cap it at 50. So that is encoding. And as I said before, encoding is just, where are we? Looking at all of these different memes and putting them at different points on the graph, depending on how similar they are to each other. And then we're going to build an index. Because you know, if you're looking at a textbook, you want to find something quick, you're not going to read the whole thing. You look at the index. And that's exactly what we're doing here. And we're just going to use simple indexer because it's quick, it's dirty, it's simple. I wouldn't use it for production, but for a quick demo, it works well. So I mentioned executors before. Where are we? Ah, oh, cute little executor dude. Or do that. They like, not sure there. So these are the executors. We're not writing any of these by hand. We're using a one-line piece of code. And that's because it's going to go to Gina Hub and just pull the executor for us. So we don't need to integrate transformers or PyTorch or anything else manually by hand. We just use this one line of code and it's a lot simpler. The hard work is taken out. So let's define that. Oh, we forgot to do the import, silly me. There we go. Yep, okay, define the flow. 
And now we're going to feed some data in. First up, just in case, we're going to remove, uh, let's see the folders we've got. Okay, we don't have the workspace folder yet. Uh, Gina will create the workspace folder and uh, that's where it will store its index data that it will later search. So we're gonna put the docs in there with the request size of 64. So it's going to throw 64 documents at a time into the flow. Yep, it's downloading all of that stuff from Gina Hub. Yep, this is a gRPC gateway. Gina actually supports REST and WebSockets as well. But since those are both web-related technologies and we're already in a Jupyter Notebook running on the web, it might not be as reliable as gRPC, which isn't web-based at all. This may take a little while, but probably not too long. Oh, that disk is really filling up. Okay. Uh, Jyoti, do we have any questions while this thing's spinning its wheels? Yeah, we do. Which distro are you using? Because like they're very impressed by the speed you have right now. Oh, for me, I use uh, Manjaro, which is based on Arch Linux. I use it because it has, if I want to install a package, it has it. Maybe not in the official channels, but in the community channels. And it's nice. I moved away from Ubuntu because I really don't like Snap. Um, yeah, it just, it feels bloaty and weird. Um, and Manjaro works very well for almost everything. I'm running the GNOME desktop. Uh, and obviously right now I'm in Chrome. Normally I would live on the terminal. That's my place. Terminal is the most error-free zone, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Which Linux distro do you recommend to a beginner? I mean, since you are the Linux. Uh, awesome. I would say Ubuntu. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't like it personally, but yeah, I'm not going to argue that it's great for beginners. I've heard good things about Mint and Elementary as well, but I haven't really played with them much. Someone said Mint is easiest, I guess, Pushkal said. I mean, if you, you're you using another platform and you want to start playing with Linux, especially the command line, I mean, Windows uh, subsystem for Linux running on Windows, that's a good place to start. You can run real Ubuntu there um, or just on the Mac. A lot of the command line stuff is almost identical. I mean, Macs basically running on BSD instead of Linux, but yeah, you know, potato, tomato. So uh, by the way, till the time it's loading, why don't you announce that what we have for swags? Uh, what? Swags criteria. Yes, oh, and while I'm at it, hello to all the GDSCs. I totally forgot to say hi uh, at the start. <laughs> um, one thing I'm gonna do quickly is I'm just going to reduce the document count to a thousand because this is taking a little while. All right, stop. Did it give a reason why I didn't want to play ball? No, it didn't. I swear this worked yesterday. So frustrating. Uh, right. Actually, let's just 
do 10. So we can be sure that there isn't uh, an issue. Okay, so at index 10, all right. So there's not a problem with the flow. It's just a question of speed. Quick and dirty debugging, love it. Okay, so now we'll do a thousand. And that will spin up again, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so swag wise, yes, we have got stickers, bridge magnet, pens, uh, and that's just the basics. To get those, all you need to do is star us, fork us. Uh, Jyoti can tell all of you a lot more about that. And for yep. people who contribute uh, in more meaningful ways, like write blog posts or make really meaningful pull requests or give top-notch tech support on our Slack, then we have uh, higher level swag packages, I would say. Things like uh, A5 notebooks, uh tote bags and we're building up our swag packages now we also have uh, a competition on our slack right now well not right now we will be launching soon about who can build the weirdest thing using gina and the winners of that the top three will get 3d printed medals uh personalized with your own name yeah i like mucking about with 3d printing okay it has indexed that is good. So now we've built up that index. It's in our workspace folder. So all of that graph stuff we saw before. Where are your Pokemon? All of this stuff is now stored in body or header.bin. I uh, these are both binary files, so they're going to be a pain to search. Uh, and the other stuff that's stored is the metadata, like uh, the absolute URI. So now let's actually search the data. In the real world, I would use a front end like this, or actually a, yeah, a custom built front end, not something I threw together in Streamlit. But since we're in a notebook, mixing web stuff isn't going to work very well. So we're going to do it this way. So all of these things we indexed, all of the memes, they were documents. So if we're going to search for something similar, we need to put a document in. So we'll have a query document and we'll just say text is school and see what comes out. So that's the query doc. And now let's open up our flow again. And we'll set the response to, uh, well, previously we used flow index, right? That built up the index of all the input means of all the data set we wanted to search. And now we're going to use flow.search with return results true and query doc as the input. Spinning its wheels, flow is starting up again, done. Uh, the response is in JSON format. So we're just going to pull out the matches because otherwise we're gonna get a whole bunch of other metadata we don't need. And then for each match, we're going to get the URL. Uh, the URL will take us directly to image flip. So let's see. Yeah, this is quite relevant. Summertime, start of school year, very relevant. What do we got here? School set, do your homework. No student loans. What's the last one? Still relevant? Wow, for like a thousand memes. We got some pretty good results. I'm honestly surprised by that. So yeah, there you have it. We indexed a whole bunch of memes, or at least the text part, and we put in some text and we found something similar. Do we have any requests for search terms? Uh, no, not right now. Okay. Um, what are some good things? Corona, maybe. Let's see how timely this is. So when when is Thanos meme? 
uh, I will do it myself. I mean, will Thanos give anything? Thanos? That's a good question. Oh, why is it? Do it. That's weird. The query doc, putting it in. Okay, Pantera, that's a heavy metal band. So it doesn't know Thanos. Uh, I guess because the memes aren't new enough. Um, let's say Thor. Maybe it'll have a better result for that because Thor is both a Marvel movies character, but like Norse mythology as well. So the model presumably understands Thor on some level. Nope. Uh, this is a problem with, it's associating Thor with dinosaur. Dinosaur maybe? So <laughs> yeah, it's, this could be for a few reasons. Maybe there in the whole data set, there are no matching means. Maybe the model doesn't understand the word. For example, Thanos, because I don't know when this model was made. Maybe all the input data it was trained on came from before Avengers Endgame. Somebody or, put in just a very nice joke that Thanos might have erased the data. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, and what's the other reason? Uh, because we only indexed a thousand. So maybe there are a few Thanos memes in there, but the way we shuffled it and we only took the top thou, yeah, we just didn't get lucky this time. Um, comic book villain. Let's see what we get now. Oh, hang on. Oh, why is it doing that again? Yeah. Sometimes it's glitching out a little bit. Anyway, if you want to play around with this, uh, you can go to examples.gina.ai. And yeah, on here, I think I indexed about 10,000, maybe 30,000. I indexed quite a lot. And with text, it's very quick to index. So let's see, Thanos. Yeah, we've got a Thanos meme. I don't understand it, but that's the only one. <laughs> and I guess the, you know, you have to choose between two buttons. It's like which half lives. Um, Thor. Yeah, again, it, Dinosaur. Comic book villain. Oh, there's a picture of Thanos, but because this isn't searching for the images, we've got Batman. So it's finding hero and villain. That's a connection comic book Batman. So it is finding stuff. And the whole reason it's returning dinosaurs here is, as I said, it's always going to return results because the graph is full of 30,000 memes or the text. And, you know, now you're putting thought into the graph and it's a long way from all of them, but it's closer to some. So even if they don't really have a strong connection, it's trying its best. Uh, this can be a good thing or a bad thing. For example, I was building a uh, celebrity face search app. So you could upload your own picture and it would find your celebrity twin. But there's always going to be some troll out there who'll upload a picture of a gorilla and go, ho, 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 it matched with Alex. I don't know. So I put some filters in place for that to stop abuse. So you can have your cake and eat it too, I guess. Um, in terms of using this in the real world, so, 
if you're building a search, presumably you want to make it public on the web. So I would use a RESTful API. So in the notebook, I used this for when I was querying, but otherwise I would use this. So I would say protocol HTTP, the port, and then I would uh, use flow.block. And that just keeps the flow open for queries to come in via uh, HTTP. And you could send these things with uh, curl. Uh, hang on, let's pull up a text one. Yeah, uh, so for example, this would be the string of JSON we send, the top K, I don't know why I put 100 here, we're doing a search, the data uh, like Thor or aliens and monsters uh, and the endpoint. And JQ just makes the JSON you get back look nice and less lets you scroll it. It's not going to work here because we're not running anything locally. Uh, we can also use Dockerized executors. Uh, this is a lot easier, but Docker doesn't play nice inside a notebook in my experience. So uh, yeah, oops, I need to edit this, don't I? Yeah, in the notebook, we're not using Docker, uh, but in the real world, we would use Docker. And when it's running here, it's running on Docker on the back end. But the individual executors are running in Docker. Okay, uh, yeah, that's it for the workshop part. Uh, some next steps you might want to take are to get in touch with us. Uh, so our repo is get.junior.ai. Uh, join our Slack community. Uh, find us on the usual channels. And we have a regular online event where we talk about what's new at Gina, uh, what cool things we're building. Uh, we share stuff with the community. And we're always open to face-to-face uh, -face discussions uh, over Zoom with the community there. It's the second Tuesday of every month, uh, 5.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. IST. And you can just Google Gina Meetup and you'll find our Meetup group. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much everything from here. Do we have any questions? Yes, there was a question. Uh, did you create a database or do you use the already existing ones? Uh, for the memes, I just used a data set from Kaggle, this one. Uh, I don't want to go to all the effort of creating my own data set. Though, you know, if you are building your own search engine, you probably would. And Gina can work with things like Postgres, it can work with Mongo, um, or it can just work with flat files or CSV files. Uh, yeah, lots of different things. Amazing. So many of them like requested many keywords. Sorry? Data, uh, does Gina AI create memes or just find the relevant ones from the data set? It just finds relevant ones. Uh, Gina is first and foremost for building neural search engines. Uh, I don't actually know if an AI could generate, but well, can an AI generate memes? Yes. Can it generate funny memes? No. You can't guarantee that. I mean, my parents don't understand memes. I uh, There are memes I don't understand. I'm too old for memes, I think. But <laughs> so asking an AI to understand them, I would love to see it. I really would. That would be fantastic. I once trained uh, GPT-2 to write Star Trek scripts. Uh, that was really fun. I love taking cutting edge technology and doing stupid things with it. And the scripts that came out, um, well, I took a version of GPT-2 that had been fine-tuned on movie scripts and then tried to fine-tune it on Star Trek. So the first few were mixes, they were crossovers between Harry Potter, Star Trek, Star Wars, who was trying to work everything out. And then it turned into Star Trek scripts with Kirk and Spock and Picard and Janeway, but they were out of character and weird things were happening. Um, so uh, 
yes, it could generate memes. Like I can generate Star Trek scripts, but I doubt they would be very good. Amazing. So there is another question. Uh, is data set creation algorithmic or straight up human input? Ah, that's a very good question. It's not something uh, we really consider at Gina. We're more about searching the data. I guess you could write an algorithm to like scrape Google for Google image search for memes. Uh, so you could create a data set that way. A lot of them though are human created or human curated, I would say. So if I were creating a data set of memes and I didn't have one to begin with, for me, I would write a script to go to Google images, uh, search and well, search for a whole range of different meme types, Doge meme, Sparta meme, most interesting man in the world meme, and then pull the top 10 uh, of each or the top 100 or whatever. And then maybe I'd want to look at those to make sure they're all valid and that nothing is, I don't know, maybe I don't want offensive memes. So maybe I'd want to pull all of those out manually because I don't trust the algorithm. So in my case, it would be a combination. Amazing. So next question is by Tarshan. He's saying in what ways can a full stack developer contribute to Gina? So we are building front end components as well. Uh, we have uh, integrations with JavaScript with uh, Gina JS that's coming up. Most of what we do is all in Python, I'll be honest. But yeah, front ends are mostly in, of course, full stack languages. So that would probably be the best place to start. So uh, Minakshi has another question. Does the search engine generate memes for different languages as well? So it certainly could. First of all, you'd want a French, let's say, a French meme data set. I don't know if those exist. Finding good data sets is really, really, really difficult. Uh, that's why I went with this one because of all the rich metadata. So just go over this very quickly. Uh, it's going to be a pain to see it actually. Oh, we've got 10 columns. Uh, yeah, Kaggle is not giving us much useful information here, unfortunately. But finding rich data sets, I found a lot of meme data sets, but they only have the images or they only have URLs to the images. Maybe the URLs don't even work. So to get the text out of that, I'd have to use OCR, which again, I could write an executor in Gina to do that, um, but it's a bit of a faff. But then I would just use a French language model to search those instead of an English one. So it would just be changing one line of code, as simple as that. Pull out the English brain, put in the French brain. Nice. So uh, there was one question, where did I miss? Yeah. Tarun asked the question, how to know if, uh, how to let it know if it doesn't give relevant meme? I mean, how does, how will you, you know, if you have any feedback loop for your search engine telling it that, okay, this is not the relevant meme you were looking for? That's a good question. We are looking at building in training. So yeah, you can train the model up on your specific data. Uh, we haven't released that yet. Uh, the other thing you can do is to look at the score of a meme. Uh, I'm just wondering how I can show you that now. So, okay, we've got matches here. Let's just insert a bit of code below. So for doc in matches, print doc. So that'll give us all the data. So for all of these, actually, Let's do something. We'll just print the first one. 
So here we go. We've got things like the hash. That's not really that useful. Alt text, blah, blah, blah. Philosopher, caption text, URI, ID, text, embedding. The embedding is all the graph data. That's really not going to be human readable ever. That's just a representation of where things are on the graph. So this is the relevant score, the cosine. So it's a little bit counterintuitive. If the number is lower, that means it's a better match. So it goes from, uh, let's say one to zero. I mean, it'll never be exactly one. It'll never be exactly zero, always somewhere in between. But one is, it's completely not a match. Zero would be perfect match. So if you got something like 0 0.0001, that would be very good. If you got 0 0.99999, not a good match. And for the celebrity twin search I was playing around with, I used this in the front end and I just put a filter. So if the cosine is higher than 0 0.25, ignore the image, don't show it. anymore amazing yeah there are. so uh the question was from part again the question was can gina search or tell difference between different meme templates because then it can do crossover memes between different memes um it depends what you tell it to search so in my case i the document text the actual text it was searching was, da, 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 da. yeah, the meme template. So surprised koala and the caption text. I put them together into the doc text. Um, and let's say you built a front end and you wanted to filter only by certain memes, like again, surprised koala. You could, where are we? We've got that. I wonder if I can do a pretty print. Will that work? No, it won't. Ah. So all of these memes, yes, okay, they have something called tags. Tags is the metadata. And you can manually specify this, but it will also automatically uh, generate it if you say scrape from a CSV file. So we've got the alt text and we've got the template here, Velociraptor. So in that case, you could have like a drop down, and then you could filter by Velociraptor, Velociraptor, or most interesting man in the world, or whatever you want. Uh, we do also support inputting this into the search. So only return me results that are with the template Velociraptor. So the other results wouldn't even get to the front end, but that's a bit outside the scope here. Amazing. So next question is, uh, which companies, organizations utilize Gina at present? I guess that is uh, on, on Gina's website. Uh, yes, we do have some companies on our website. Uh, so Kuhom, Wordlift, WhoForce, Yahaha, Delphi AI. Uh, we are working with several other companies in our early adopter program, but we can't announce anything just yet. Okay, so next question from Ritik. There are possibly many image processing library. What Gina AI really works in the field of, does it improve them? I mean, does it improve the image processing? So we just use pre-existing, pre-built uh, neural networks. So Gina makes it easy to integrate lots of stuff. We're not currently focusing on building our own models or improving what's already out there. Uh, for myself, when I'm building image search, I've tried using a couple of these models. So on Gina Hub, 
so let's just search image and see what comes up. So I've used clip image encoder. This is really good for finding features. Uh, actually, I'll talk first about uh, big transfer encoder. This is very good at finding very similar images, I would say. So if you're searching for similar memes, I would say this is very good. And this is what I used in the meme uh, image search. So you can upload a picture of the philosopher raptor meme, and then it'll find exactly the same kind of memes because it's going by the pixels in the image. It's not doing any deep computation. But if you wanted something more advanced, uh, I would use something like clip. Uh, if you search uh, Google Images for, and I'm searching Google Images because it has a huge data set, uh, not our internal search engine for Doge meme. You get a lot of different images, right? We know they're Doge because we can see, oh, look at his cute little eyes, his cute little ears. Oh, this is a dog. Uh, also, this is a coin. <laughs> Exactly. And like, if you use clip, it would do the same thing to go, oh, cute little eyes, cute little ears, put it all together and you get similar things uh, from the clip encoder. But if you use the big transfer encoder, you would get matches to this, uh, maybe this, probably this, because it's all very, very similar pixel values. Uh, but you wouldn't get matches with this. This and this wouldn't match because this has got, you know, it's still a dog, but very different picture. So this is, is it a good idea to store the search data like here, the search memes for future upgradations or should we work independently according to the trend? Oh, uh, sorry, could you repeat that? Is it a good idea to so, so store the searched data, like uh, you search the searched meme right now, and some of them were giving wrong answers, so maybe for feedback loop. So can we store these for future upgradations, or should it work like independently according to the trend, irrespective of what time we are living in? Um, I would say that would depend on the data set. Uh, as I said before, data sets are Good data sets are difficult to find. So if you can find a meme data set that is constantly being updated, maintains a consistent format, then you could write a function to pull that data set, like pull the updates to it every month, uh, and then put those into your index. And yeah, your data would improve over time. I don't believe there are any such data sets out there for memes, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, in AI, most of the grunt work, I would say, mo a lot of the time is spent in date finding the right data, preparing the data. Relatively little time is spent in actually building the pipelines and or everything, the fun stuff about how you, what models you're using, how you're processing the data, building your search engine. That's the fun stuff, uh, but dealing with data takes a lot of time. Ask any data engineer, those poor, poor people. Also, uh, like, uh, how will Gina be there in Hacktober? Can you tell them about the app right event that we are going to have on 21st, where Christian will be going to tell about all of this? Yes, so we are holding an event with AppRite for October 1st. Uh, one of our engineers, Christian Matroy, will be giving a quick talk about Gina, along with some other speakers who are speaking about their companies. We'll have a lot of good first issues up, uh, possibly some small pieces of custom swag. Uh, and we'll, yeah, we'll be running our Who Can Build the Weirdest uh, Thing with Gina contest as well. So if you want to learn more about that, you can join our Slack. We haven't officially announced it yet, but we ran a community poll. Uh, where are we? And we can see how popular that was. If we go to general. Yes, so 
we previously ran a meme contest and that was obviously quite popular but the next one everybody wants us to do a competition right using gina in a weird and interesting way what does that mean i don't know yet if i knew it wouldn't be that weird or interesting would it So there is a question which is like more of a general sort of thing, not related to Sheena, but what do you think about AI taking over the world? Taking over the world like Terminator or AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's possible, but just like the moon crashing into the earth tomorrow is possible. I'm never going to say something is impossible. I don't think it's likely anytime soon. I don't see it currently developing in any breakthrough way. Will AI take over the world? It'll take over the world of truck driving, potentially. It'll, it could take over the world of some software developers because uh, GPT-3 and GPT-J can actually write code. And you can see that in GitHub Copilot if you play with that. So AI, A-N-I, artificial narrow intelligence will disrupt the world, it'll disrupt jobs. But then cars disrupted the horse industry. It's, there's always gonna be disruption. With AI, there might be more, but it's just going to be, yeah, a lot more change, not a fundamentally different type of change. There is uh, one more question by Ritik. Uh, so you personally, so <laughs> Alex? Alex. Yeah. Sir Alex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you personally believe in scrapping own data or using existing data from different sources like Kaggle? It depends. I mean, if the data exists on Kaggle, I'd probably go with that. As long as it's a free and open source data set. And most of them are. So license, CC0, public domain, anyone can use this. It's going to be a lot easier. But let's say I am building uh, a search engine just for my own photos, a private search engine. Well, I'm obviously just going to use my own data set. Amazing. So that's all the questions, I guess there is. One more, Aman, how can we join with you? I mean, maybe contribute or something like that. So the first step would be to join our Slack, uh, slack.gina.ai and join our contribute channel. You can also look at uh, our GitHub repo. Uh, All right, and we have issues, uh, good first issues. So we've got a, a few good first issues you can jump in on. Uh, also, you can build your own Gina examples and post them to our showcase channel. And yeah, every Saturday we highlight uh, community contributor, in this case, Rudranch, he's really cool. He built like a basketball search engine using Gina. But yeah, so fix an issue or build an example. Another good way to get started is by running one of our Hello Worlds. So yeah. We've got a whole bunch of quick demos you can run from the command line. So like a fashion search or a chatbot or multimodal search. So that will find similar fashion items in an image data set. Or we've got a chatbot about COVID-19, things like that. And you're always welcome to uh, Take, uh, I built these examples. You're welcome to take a look at them and fork them, do whatever you want with them. They're all open source. Uh, 
Where is the repo for this? Yeah. So we've got all of these, jump in, play around with the code. That's how I typically get started with any project myself. I have an idea of what I want to build. I find a similar project or similar enough. I fork it. I hack around with it and adapt it to my own needs. That's how I learn. That's how I started with Gina. Um, now I can build something from scratch myself, but I started by taking something someone else had built and just pulling it to bits. Amazing. So I guess these were all the questions and there was one more, I guess. Uh, Tarun wants to develop something like personal search engine for photos. Do you have any suggestions or any uh, GitHub examples that might help him? So good question. I would say the simple image search that I built, uh, I'm going to have to Google it. Does, do we have like uh, any existing example on GitHub? Uh, we do, yes. Let me just find it. It's on my own repo actually, uh, called Simple Image Search. Simple Gina examples. Oh, a few people have forked it already, Image Search. This is what the meme image search is running on. I'll share so, the link. Cool. So as you can see, it's using Gina Hub plus Docker. First of all, it normalizes the images going into the pipeline. So it makes them all the same size, shrinks them down quite a lot because that makes them a lot easier to process. So shrinks them down to 40 by 40. It feeds them into the big transfer encoder. So that puts them on the graph with all the other images, and then it builds the index. I'm only using the old indexer right now because uh, I've got a deployed version from about a month ago that uses the old index format. If you were doing it yourself, you would take away the old. We have a generate docs, that's like prep docs. Uh, we have the index function. We have the query function, an HTTP query, and yeah, so it's a, it's under a hundred lines of code. It's pretty simple. Okay, so somebody praise your DP. Aman says you have a very nice display picture on GitHub. <laughs> oh, that yes, I. What what are, what is with that uh, those glasses that you have? Uh, I was in a shop in Prague and I was just trying them on and I took a selfie and I didn't buy them. And I regret it to this day because I use this image everywhere. So, you know, maybe that's why I bought these. I saw them a few weeks ago and I was like, my inner 12 year old girl said, yes, Alex, you must buy these or you'll regret it. Inner 12 year old girl. But I have access to a laser cutter. So I'm probably going to create something crazier. Because wow. what else am I going to do with a laser cutter? I like using powerful tools to do stupid things. You you created a, a butterfly also with a uh, with an Arduino, right? That's right. I build animatronic butterfly jewelry, life size. It sits on you. It flaps. It doesn't fly because even the U.S. military can't do that. <laughs> wow. So. Akash Tiveri says it's here, Alex, what to expect from Gina in coming years? I mean, in a unicorn? Coming years. Years? Wow. I mean, we only started uh, in February last year. So in the coming years, who knows? Lots more stars, lots more forks, uh, and lots more adoption. So in Thank terms you. of upcoming features, I would suggest you join our engineering all hands, where people can talk about that in a lot more depth. People have been talking about Gina as a unicorn. I think that'll happen, but you know, touch wood, don't want to tamper fake there. Yeah, let's not jinx it. 
I guess these uh, were all the questions. And there is another question. Any suggestion for WIM users? I mean, I guess in terms of Gina, I'm not pretty sure of the question. For what users? WIM users. I mean, you Vim. love WIM. You technically I live in WIM. <laughs> um, I mean, not specifically. Um, what are my plugins? I would suggest use some good Python plugins. Um, I use black for code formatting. That's the official thing we use in Gina. It makes all the coding styles look the same. Oh, I use uh, NeoVim, by the way, which has a few additional features, including Lua plugins. Uh, Semshi, that gives us richer syntax highlighting. PyDocString, I don't really use that. Uh, text object Python. That lets me YAF for yank around function or DAF or VAC for visually select around class. Uh, PEP8 indent. Don't remember what that does. It probably maintains consistent indents. And I have a whole bunch of disabled ones. Uh, if you're using plain vanilla Vim, probably you'd want Jedi. Um, but because I'm using NeoVim, it it has pretty good support with tree sitter and things like that. Uh, yeah. So nothing especially Gina specific, just Python specific when it comes to them. Amazing. So I guess uh, this is, these were all the questions. All and right. G, you know, GDSEs in India, are like the smartest bunch of developers and student communities you can get in India. So I guess uh, this is just pretty great the crowd today and uh yeah i mean do you have any closing notes it was wonderful having you all here i mean how many people do we have here 99 we we capped at 195 wow not bad uh it was fantastic seeing all of you hang on um let's yeah uh, because we're in a webinar i don't know how you can all share your screens it'd be really nice to get a screenshot let me see what i can do here uh, see if I can allow you all to share screens. Now attendees to, ah. I don't think it's possible, unfortunately, because otherwise I would love to get a screenshot of everyone waving at the camera, but I don't think that's gonna happen. But fantastic questions, everyone. It was, I'd say it was great seeing you all here, but I can't see any of your faces. But it's great having you all here. Truly honored. Such a good turnout. Um, and yeah, if you could star Gina, fork Gina, and run our Hello World examples, and hey, join our Slack, say hi on the introductions channel, I would be over the moon. So yeah. So, a lot of people saying that you have nice classes, and thank you for the insightful <laughs> session. Again, I'd, many people are after your glasses, but I'll get them first. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to do these as uh, exclusive swag. God tier swag. Yeah, we could do this. God tier swags. All right. It was, like I said, a true pleasure. And yeah, follow me. You can follow me on Twitter. You can talk to me there. As I said, I'll just bring up my Twitter and GitHub again in case you want to follow me. Uh, where's the deck? So yeah, this is me, AlexCG1 on GitHub and AlexCG on Twitter. I tweet about all sorts of things, not just Gina. And like I said, I, I don't have much of a filter. So if you don't like uh, swearing, probably, I don't swear all the time, but <laughs> just fair warning. Cool. All right. Well, once again, thank you, everybody. And yes, it would be great to have you in our slide. Yeah. For the swags, we'll be announcing the, I mean, GDS leads would be announcing the winners by the end of the day. And I'll be sharing the form with you all. And thank you so much for joining in. It was really, really great. I mean, uh, to see so many of you ent enthusiastic people and the questions were like really nice. I was thinking to myself, okay, where do I get the answer for that? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, thank you so much. Perfect. Thanks again.
拜拜。